never a wall or they mad now cause they lost that's on you not on me lately my phone on dmv i tried again i tried again i tried again to get some peace that's all i need i tried again i tried again i tried again to get some peace that's all i need my phone right back on dmv it's like only rest if i
Oh my God, let's get it going. Give me a lean with Charlie if you can hear me loud and clear. So happy to be back for a Man Cave Monday. Let's get this shit popping real quick, man. Answer that damn phone. I'm here with you, Gary. And you can slice. You can slice the face. You can slice the chest. <laughs> but you know what? It all comes back to one thing. But it's not for Come children, though. No, I'm no. just, I'm fucking with grown folks Come right now. Come on, man. Great, just make sure, remind folks, put Q colon in front of their questions so that grabs my attention. Put a Q up front of it. It's Timmy time. Brother, this guy stinks. Goddamn YouTube correctional officers. I hope they pay you well. Glad everybody stopped by having a real good time, my guy. Rocky coming through, letting know he shoot goddamn rope for the bug out. Pause. I see you, Rocky. Ron, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a goddamn member. Hey, man, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a goddamn member. Ian, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a goddamn member. You know, they're going to be like, he was a good man. Yeah. See you, Geppetto, the like button. Put me back in the goddamn algorithm. Emotional, damn it. Fun is definitely what we're going to be heavily focused on. I think that everybody's on Sabinja's balls. They got them both cupped with, with the hands, like kind of like this. Right, let me just let me cup them for you. Boy, ain't no way, boy. <laughs> Chris, you know you got the goddamn hooked on phonics, sir. Here we go. I'm ambidextrous. What more do you want from me? <laughs> Semper damn, bye. Damn, damn. I'm not a goddamn mathematician. I don't think Dwayne is here. My resident mathematician. I'm here to play Hell nah, man. Fire that shit up. Fire that stuff up real quick for everybody coming through, making the stuff happen. My name is Marine X. We are here for another Man Cave Monday. First off, smoke them if you got smoke them. Some bitch. You already know I got my shit lit, man. You already know my stuff is lit. My name is Marine X. We come around here. We do Man Cave Mondays. We like, we, we, we like to talk about man cave stuff, survival, prep, EDC, all of that good stuff. So this is the type of shit you like, man. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, boy. Look at all this freaking lovely ass smoke being produced by this Drew Estate Undercrown. This is what I'm talking about. This is the type of stuff, like when I say I like big old pluming clouds of smoke when it comes to my stick, this is what I'm talking about. I might as well just, you know, I got a Drew Estates Undercrown going, got a V cut. It is it is a smoker. That thing is it just piping hot, putting off plenty of smoke. I like that. I like when I get those really good results and stuff like that. We're going to have that with a bib and tucker. This is age six years. I Listen, I've had this bottle for a while. And I've been trying to find myself to actually try it out more, really get used to it, be a little bit, you know, not not be so poo-poo about the shit. It's 92 proof. Is My issue with this, it always gave me like a peppery vibe. And it was kind of hard for me to get, get with it. But uh, I really like the way the bottle looks. Like that shit is, you know what I'm saying? The bottle is freaking dope. I will give them that. They... They put their whole goddamn scrotum in a bottle. Pause. Okay, so it's just looking real good. So those are the vibes we got going on for now. Somebody already put me down for two ounces. I think and we're gonna call that two ounces. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna say we're gonna say that that we've already made the two ounce mark and all that good stuff. Make sure you hit that goddamn like button as we get it going, man. It is time to freaking glaze, literally glaze my EDC pickups from Blaze from blade show texas man it is time for us to just all just all enjoy the wonderfulness now listen man listen tomorrow's my birthday so i decided to actually spend a little bit of money at blade show this year so i got a couple of pickups and we're gonna see how i feel about them is it something i want to continue to try out is it something i'm not interested in you know we're, we'll see how it goes We will see how it goes. So overall, we got a couple of pickups to talk about. What did you carry today? 
what's the temperature where you're at for some freaking reason it was 93 degrees man, bro, here come on now, 93 boosie come on man 90 february 26 2024 and it is got dang 93 degrees in the dfw metroplex like what, what what's going on bro bro what are you talking about man and you know what's so crazy? Do not tell Mrs. X this. If you're watching this, Danny, Lene, that you're going to find out literally a queen wasp woke up and somehow magically this broad was inside of our goddamn house. Like, I don't know. Have y'all ever had that before? I've had wasps get inside my house before through can lighting. So sometimes they make their way through sometimes like the gabling in your in your attic or the easement in your attic the weeping hose or whatever and then they 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 follow can lighting like it's the sun and i've had wasps literally crawl through can lighting in my house and boom i got a wasp in my kitchen now i don't trip off like that but i know that mrs x she, she didn't have that shit that shit is not flying okay mid 60s in missouri says kevin Hey, hey, appreciate it. It was nice meeting you, Kevin, man. I had a real good time. I appreciate you participating in the video, all that good stuff. That is super well appreciated. It's so crazy, though, because so today I'm sitting there and our entryway has 20, maybe 20, 25 foot ceilings when you walk into the entryway of my house. And I notice everything on my walls. New Somebody draws on the walls, some random someone had slime or freaking spaghetti sauce on their hands and they touch my wall i noticed shit on my walls that means i noticed shit on my ceilings so i'm walking to head up the stairs and there is a queen wasp you know this bra just woke up looking for somewhere to create her nest but she knows that she's not outside so she's just chilling you know i know i gotta take care of this thing and not say a word to mrs x okay mm -mm. Dare not say a word to Mrs. X. I know what the damn deal is. I don't want none of that smoke, man. So I got some of that 20 foot long wasp spray. Matter of fact, it's right here. I got some of this 20 foot long. You ever used this shit before? Wasp and hornet spray. Man, this stuff here sprays 27 feet of jet. Got this thing out, freaking pulled it out, sprayed it across, and I got a. I also have a twenty foot duster. Grab that thing and knock the wasp down instantly. And we're just we're gonna speak nothing of this, okay? We will speak nothing of this. And so I just know that it's gonna be a long spring and, and summer of of animals and insects and wasps around my house. I, I can already tell what the damn deal is. I can I already know what the goddamn deal is gonna be. So I thought to myself, we'll make some stuff happen. So today I was supposed to have Neves knives on. Of course, I started my live stream late. I freaking hate hey, myself. Bro, okay. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. But I'll have Neves knives on soon. I'll have him on my show. And then vice versa. He will have me on his show. Interview style, uh, bringing him on. Ask he can ask me whatever the F he wants and vice versa if you guys don't follow neves knives jared is a great guy go check him out there may be some questions that y'all have been wondering if i will ever answer or talk about and we will get down with the nitty gritty so we'll make that stuff happen as well so blade texas was this weekend very interesting i just dropped a vlog about blade texas and i tend, i don't vlog a lot but when i do i try to make it a little bit interesting and so i knew i was going to be going to blade going to be going to blade so I was like, well, you know, I might as well vlog my experience and just to see what I'm going to be picking up. Plus, on top of that, you know, Tom Talk freaking uh, sponsored the video. So we had to make it freaking spicy. OK. <laughs> so we had to make it a little bit spicy and. um you know, I, I got a few thoughts about Blade. We'll talk about what I picked up, some thoughts I got about Blade, and where I'm hoping the industry and the community uh, community goes sooner than 
later. First off, Blade is always a freaking sight for sore eyes. What is Blade Show? Blade Show is an event where it's a collaboration of people that are EDC enthusiasts, custom knife makers, so the people that actually make custom knives, people that purchase custom knives, uh, production knives, small batch knives, pre-order, all that type of shit. Flashlights are sold there. And this, because this is Blade Texas, we also have a large selection of cowboy hats chaps all that type of stuff okay so you can get a go you can get you a nice pair of assless chaps up, what? okay even though all chaps are assless <laughs> bro what are you talking about man <laughs> but the one of the hat that cowboy hat that's over my shoulder i picked that up at a well I, it was at a sh it wasn't at a blade show but we always have stuff like that in and that's like a 300 hundred dollar cowboy hat so you know we really care about that type of stuff here and the dfw tetra uh, texas area it's in fort, fort worth texas always has a nice little crowd to it and um so I, I went to day one for only an hour because you know my hairstylist she said you know I, listen you know i got goddamn dreadlocks of course y'all have seen them on my goddamn head okay well i had to get them hooked up had to get them taken care of my stylist was like uh you either get them done today or you don't get them done at all i said ma'am i i i'm on my way okay But as for as for Saturday, second second day of Blade Show, was there for several hours. Had a, all sorts of my 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 laser focus for Blade Show specifically was I really wanted to focus on micro brands. I really wanted to focus on brands that don't get a lot of notoriety. They don't get a lot of publicity. They're not always on the front page. They're not on KnifeNews.com. Maybe they haven't got their hands, their knives in the hands of creators, and maybe they're banging out some quality products. And so that was the main focus of the vlog. And, you know, we picked up some different stuff there, saw, met a lot of people that was there. It was just a really good time. We'll talk about what I picked up before we talked about what I picked up, man. Let's see who's already in the mix. You know what I'm saying? Before we even do any of that type of stuff as well. We got Cali Hiker is here. Man, oh, man, you freaking taking over the screen sir bring that ass down man bring that ass down appreciate you kicking the door in, man we do appreciate you kicking the door in mike and ike's edc is here as well sir appreciate you stopping by thanks for being a goddamn member God, no. we appreciate that my guy double tack that like button yeah hit that like button man let it be now slap that shit Are you not we got the late night freaking man cave monday type of vibes going on uh knives are life is here as well hey thanks for kicking the door in a lot of places you could have went but for some reason you're here and that is super well appreciated semper fire Arr, what up man what up been creeping in your chat during your live streams i see you out there killing it appreciate you kicking the door in as mentioned earlier kevin is here hopefully you got back safe in missouri obviously you did because you just said what the temperature is there so that is appreciated sucker free what up man yeah, uh, sucker free you're on an iphone i know you were you emailed me about having the difficulties being able to join memberships hopefully you can navigate it you know it, it's a weird iphones make it so hard to join channel members i have an android as my main phone i just click the little button right on my phone and i'm in there like freaking swimwear iphones they make that shit go harder and harder bentley is here as well x how's it going it's going pretty good man how are you doing how's classes how's all that stuff hopefully you're ready for the spring rocky is here as well man what up man thanks for kicking the door in ghost malone edc is saying yo hey listen ghost speaking of ghost man ghost energy drink pumping out some of my favorite energy drink and they just came out with these ghost minis like the mini versions of the normal big size energy drinks that only have 100 milligrams of caffeine which would be great if I know I have to, if I'm coming out in the man cave, it's at 1800 and I'm not going to be going to bed until like maybe quad zero or zero one in the morning, like maybe a hundred. I know, listen, some of y'all are going to say, why are you drinking? You know, why are you drinking? You know what I'm saying? Why, why are you drinking caffeine that late? Just for, listen, I, there's some things I want to be able to do. Okay. Sometimes I know I got a lot of shit to do. I'm doing this right now. When I get done with this, I literally got to do some editing you know and tomorrow and i gotta work my real job tomorrow so i can't you know work youtube during the day so i'm always trying to find different ways to kind of squeeze that stuff in 
Smash that like button. Yeah, appreciate that, man. Uh, Philip is giving the confirmation. Thanks, Philip, for stopping by as well. So let me know what you guys carried in your pockets to, and all that good stuff as well. It says, have a good stream. Got to go carrying the, oh my God. I have never been able to figure out how to pronounce. I'm going to look up a YouTube video so I can figure out how to pronounce the sugar, Shurogava. Sh I don't know how to pronounce that shit. Lee Williams 110 kickstop. Because you put that there, I want to actually, let me see if I can grab your text. I want to look this up because I feel like it's going to be a a banger of a price maybe i'm mistaken maybe it's not but now i'm like super curious about how much this thing actually is going to cost so it came out and looks like it came out a few years ago okay so if i got it from arizona custom knives 1995 oh hey, my bro, god come on now, dog. cpm come on man oh <sighs> goodness gracious oh look it was on sale msrp was 24.95 well that's a steal that's a steal of a deal now that you mention it listen there's just so many things that about this knife that look, are aesthetically pleasing but that for me personally they don't get grandpa excited first of all how do you open it it looks like you open it with a flipper i don't see anything else yeah it's a flipper me personally if i'm going to spend more than 150 dollars on a knife and it's not an otf or something like that i want more than one way to open the knife i just feel like i get banged out I, I know it doesn't matter but for me it just makes me feel like i'm getting more bang out of my buck um i don't like titanium scales on knives i, I mainly because i've I had a bad a couple of bad experiences is with scales for one of my benchmade knives and then i had a v knives titanium knife and both of them were just not good for hunting and stuff like that right it says sheer o go rav i appreciate that jesse sheer o go rav i'm still gonna watch the goddamn video so i can figure that shit out okay what mm. bro what are you talking about man because cpm has been telling me the name of this it, it has it it, it it has to be at least a year and a half cpm has been coming by the live streams he always has these bangers these panty droppers of knives and a lot of times i'll be like yeah i don't know how to pronounce that shit man happy early birthday says uh knives they appreciate that man you know what i'm saying tomorrow the plants are i just listen i told the wife i want to keep it simple stupid i didn't call her stupid but kiss keep it real simple i want to just maybe go to top golf or go to like bowling at main event or something like that which is a bowling place here in the dfw metroplex kind of chill out get tipsy with my wife you know what i'm saying and freaking go 20 toes that's it you ain't got to spend no money unless you want to you know lingerie or some shit real simple because we got a lot of kids, okay? We got a lot of kids. And we get it in pretty often, okay? Don't get it twisted, okay, Boosie? I'm saying we make that shit hey, happen. Bro, come on now, dog. We make the shit happen. Come on, man. But I want the ability, you know, just kind of just say fuck them kids for like a moment in time and be able to just kind of do our thing for a while. And so that is something that is... uh that's kind of looking forward to man we're kind of making that stuff happen and uh i mean it's a it's a pretty easy requirement put a goddamn add a boy in the chat because i know y'all see freaking danny lene on the screen okay there's a reason why we make this shit happen tammy is here as well put a add a boy in the chat put googly eyes in the chat put some goddamn googly eyes in the chat so that very simple requirements man very simple requirements you know maybe go top golf bowling you know just real cool chill vibes and then we kind of just go from there and then we kind of just go from there put a cue code in front of your stuff to see your question just in case i don't want to miss it or anything like that so we can make that stuff happen as well x i got a hot take some walmart gear is worth a damn i'm just saying the seven dollar ozark trail knife is uh bought is good a cheap mechanical pin light is amazing and they also just came out with uh what's the name of the knife brand that just recently started to 
provide their knives is it swiss tech it's swiss tech right i got the i got the six dollar you know i got the six dollar 95 cent walmart knife you know saying i got that mug in the night in the drawer you know what i really like about those knives not because they're just fantastic or they're bangers or something like that what i really like about the knives is the fact that you can easily you can easily um you can get that knife and you can kind of use it as like a lift uh, a, a test to see is your sharpener working correctly right you can figure out is your sharpener so say for instance you just got a brand new sharpener you just got some new, brand new stones or whatever and you don't want to jack up your expensive knives you can always just go pick up a mossy oak or ozark trail a swiss tech something like that that has the same angle as a blade that you want to sharpen and go for it right and then if you jack it all up then who freaking cares it was a six dollar walmart knife that's that's one of my favorite reasons to use it one of my favorite ways to use it we make that stuff happen as well uh happy birthday to the old man hey listen i am turning 38 tomorrow 38 tomorrow man how old are y'all in this freaking chat shout out to 38 man Thirty-eight tomorrow, two years away from that forty, which for me is just you know saying two years away from getting some of these goddamn kids up out my hey, house. Okay, bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man. I got a fifteen. Listen, I, I'm saying that, but I, I don't mean that shit. Me personally, I believe my daughters can live with me until their husbands or their wives, whatever floats their boat, comes and gets them, so they can have a whole career. I don't even care they can stay with me until their husbands or wives come and get them as for my sons i don't intend to kick them out when they're 18 you know i have a i have a really good friend she's my age she has a son who is 19 she has a son who is 18 and she has a son who is 16 okay she you know what I'm saying she she made some things happen okay what? anyways bro what are you talking about man and they still stay with her and she's teaching them things such as how to write a check how to balance your checking account, how to turn on utility bills, like things that you don't learn in high school because you're busy, you know, graduating high school. So that's kind of, I, I kind of want to take that example as well, man. It says he has the old man deadlock custom in my pocket in a V2 stout by, listen, Divio, it's so funny because I was just, um, so I stopped, that's one of the places I stopped by. They gave me this um, microfiber cloth here. And I'm super interested in some Divio stuff. I know that they, um, they don't white label, they private label. They private label with, um, they have one best tech model. So they have one best tech model that's private label. And I, th I can't remember who is the other manufacturer of their knives. But they, I, I, I got my phalanges on their knives at Blade Texas, and they are really, you know, saying, "Oh my God, Kevin is 26, Isaac is 29, trying to make it happen." Oh my goodness. Um, you know, so it seems like they're putting out some great quality, and I guess that kind of brings me to like the first thing that I picked up at Blade Texas, because since we're talking about people that are private labeling with other companies is the cdc hansen now the cdc hansen um shout out to cdc is because i have shit on the cdc's because of the colored blades if i hand one of my pocket knives to mrs x or to someone who never handles a pocket knife i would prefer that they don't cut off their own phalanges hey, bro, okay come on now no, i would prefer that come on man about to be 17 hey man okay i remember those days you know it's so crazy bentley literally it's about to be my 20 year reunion and i feel like i was just 17 and it's been 20 years since i was 17 okay devo 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 so um but cdc so the crispy donut community i finally i picked up i wanted to pick up one they're not so they private label with qsp and you know the difference between private label and white label so white label is if i want to start selling this microphone right i find out who manufactures this microphone 
and I just literally put my logo on it and I start to drop shit and it's white label private labels. If I want to sell this microphone, I get with the manufacturers. Maybe I add a different coloration. I add some CNC machining. I add some jipping on it and the shell is still this microphone, but I've made it my own. So a lot of these companies that don't have custom knife makers in shop, they are private labeling with different OEMs specifically overseas. I don't have any issues with that. As long as you disclose it, Devo discloses it. CDC discloses it. Uh, another pickup that I have discloses it. So I like type, I like stuff like that. So I did pick up this one here and this knife is gonna, it's gonna need a lot of work for work, breaking it in because it has thumb studs on it, but the, it's so tight. The, the D10 is so tight right now that it hurts my nail. It literally digs into my nails to try to use the thumb studs at this moment. So I'm using the flipper. I'm going to actuate it a couple hundred times. So tomorrow at work, while I'm working, I'll just take this thing out at the desk and just flip it open over and over. But you see that the pattern that they're known for with these G10 scales on there. This is a D2 blade. As mentioned earlier, private labeled through QSP. I don't know which QSP model this is labeled after. But it feels really good. I will say that the sprinkles, okay. I, I I never thought I would say this, but the sprinkles make it easier to grip. Hey, bro, come on. No, now, Boosie. Dog. Okay. Come on. It man. makes it easier to grip. I don't know how do you describe this blade shape? It's it's not really drop point. You know, I guess I got this freaking mouse pad right here. What what would I describe this blade shape as? It I guess it is it drop point? It's like more of a um I don't know. I guess it's, oh, it's a, is it straight back? I guess it would be straight back according to this little, little, um, mat that I have here. So it's caught, they're saying straight back. I don't know if that's accurate. So this is a NAF knives mouse pad that I have and that's straight back. That's drop point. I, I don't know if it's accurate or not, but that's the vibes that this knife is giving me. And it seems like it's going to be because it's almost tanto. It's almost like that style it's going to be i think it's going to be decent for when i'm using it for zip ties using it for cutting paracord but here's the thing it's a stormtrooper layout so this is what the knife looks like kind of right here and then if we do the um so it looks like a drop point that identifies as a tanto oh my god this identify stuff oh my god what? okay Bro, what are you talking about? Man? This is a mini bug out and the mini bug out has a true drop point, but they're both the mini bug out has uh, white uh, grivery scales and the scales are already starting to be discolored. And I don't carry this blade very often. I mean, it looks white in the camera, but if you were to get this thing here in person or if I were to get the, the camera lens even closer, um, I've only had this thing for 48 hours and I can tell that it's going to absorb the dirt from my phalanges very easily and you know what i don't think that's a bad thing i think i actually might enjoy the way that this thing discolors we'll see um but just to kind of like a, a comparison say there's a ontario rat one which is a big boy so you can kind of see where the um the cdc kind of falls in line where it's a decent it's a decent size i don't know how big this goddamn blade is but for those of you to have like the um, full size Praxis by Savivi. So it's a, it's a, I like the blade so far. I haven't done much cutting with it. It's a liner lock. It's D2. It's coated. Um, a lot of people say, look, if you look at D2 wrong, it's going to freaking rust. I don't know. Is that true? I know it's some freaking true knife heads out there, man. Let me know. I am not a blade steel aficionado. Not at all. I do like the fact that this thing is only $60 though. It's, it's hard to find it in stock. But it's only 60 bucks. So if it's $60 and it says use your powder to slap that like button. Appreciate that, Chris. Yeah, you do you prefer Johnson and Johnson, Tough Acting, Tenactin, or Walmart brand when you ever you slap those like buttons, man? Are you not entertained? Slap that shit. Are you not entertained? Let's go ahead and get these likes up real quick. We'll see how it goes though. Um, I'm a big fan of, you know, the crossbar style locks, whether it be uh, crossbar or compression style with spider codes so we'll see how i feel about this and then just overall it has a pm3 right next to it to kind of gauge it out 
so this is the first pickup um i like the fact it's only 60 bucks i think that's going to be a one of those easier recommendations i think it's going to be something where i can happily be like hey you know if you can't find the actual cdc then whatever qsp model this is modeled after i could almost happily say this might be a w for the pick up because if the cdc is 60 dollars, i can't imagine that the qsp is more than 60 bucks right right so that's something to think about as well so that's one of the first pickups so let me know what you guys carry today as well we'll talk about the next one here in a second as well so this is one of those ones that i picked up was not you know shout out to cdc man um for for making me a true believer because getting it into my hand at blade texas kind of made me feel like it was something that i might be able to enjoy jesse is saying good evening all oh, appreciate you kicking the goddamn door in 73 in fort hood which is you know a few hours away so did you have a uh a, 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 what was your what was the high temperature today so right now it's 73 did you have a 90s today as well you're further south than i am so that's something to think about. Stay angry. Lightning Boat is here as well. Say howdy. Thanks for kicking the goddamn door in. The Savivi Badlands. A Gonzo 749. He had a Coast G26. I don't know if I've ever handled a G26. I've had the G20 and G22 quite a few times. And it is 60 degrees in the ocean state. Which state is the goddamn ocean state, Boosie? Hey, I don't... bro. Come on now. Is that bro. Washington? <laughs> come on, man. Is that Washington? I'm just guessing. I, I I am just guessing. Okay, I passed geography because obviously I got a master's degree or two. You know, so I at some point I passed the shit, but that doesn't mean I retained a goddamn thing. Okay. Man, it's Bib and Tucker. This Bib and Tucker, as mentioned earlier, is drinking way easier than I remember it's going down it's not it's not going down like water okay it's not going down like you know keystone light 30 stones for 10 bones it's not none of that none of that but it's uh it's something that's a little bit more tolerable somebody put me down for two more ounces man somebody put me down for two more ounces that should put me at four that should put me at four so let's see what we got here yeah that looks about that looks about right so somebody put me down for two more ounces man you're not gonna bully me we're gonna say that that is two ounces, and we're gonna call that as a as a must. I don't I don't want to do too much today because on the birthday I already know we're gonna be making that shit happen. Said so I don't want to be freaking assed out and barely able to wake up tomorrow. <laughs> that would be horrible, right? I'm just saying. Oh, it's Rhode Island. It's Rhode Island. Okay, okay. I guess you know ocean. I guess that makes sense. I guess Rhode Island's one of those states that I would want to visit. I really want to know what barrier islands y'all have off the coast. I love our coastal states because we have all these like hidden gems of barrier islands that you can go visit and you shit on the state and you don't realize the fantastic vacation spots that they got. Yeah, we've all heard of Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard, but what about the other barrier islands? Off the North Carolina has fantastic barrier islands, the Outer Banks. And you can go to South Carolina. They got great barrier islands. Florida has them. New York, the state of New York has them. Um, even Michigan in the lakes, they have, uh, they're not barrier islands. They have islands out there in the lakes. So it's just like, I appreciate the coastal states because of just like the fishing, the wildlife. You get like this, oh my gosh, what, what is that called? I know someone calls it. I used to live in North Carolina for years. I should remember the name of it. But when you have fresh water and salt water mixed together, we, we call that water something, but I used to fish that all the time in North Carolina, catch fresh tr uh, trout, stuff like that. But it was some of the best fishing, some of the best places. Foley, Folly Island in South Carolina is one of my favorite places to go, which is a barrier island. It's just hidden gems all up and down the East Coast, man. So we appreciate that as well. Kevin says, I'm glad I got to meet you. Uh, I was hoping to see you inside. Glad I caught you before I went back to my hotel. Listen, Kevin, you drove down from Missouri, okay? You are the MVP, okay? Spam that shit. You did a nearly seven hour drive from Missouri 
to enjoy Blade Texas. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself. I saw the pickups that you had. So I know you were able to pick up some stuff, right? So uh, put a cute code in front of your stuff. In front of your question or your comment, it will gain my attention. Eventually, I will put Q colon and I will segregate comments to look for those. 75 in Iowa. Now, the thing about, oh my God, this the comment is humongous. What is going on? We're gonna have to fix this. We're gonna we're gonna fix this on when my live stream is over because y'all's comments are going freaking haywire today. But it's he says 75 in Iowa today. He had an ASK, a G uh, he had a Glock 19, a Medford. A Trayvox wallet. I listen. I really want a Trayvox G10 wallet. I want to do a G10 carry, a G10 multi tool. There's a company that's literally doing a clone of the Gerber. I think it's the suspension multi tool, and they've created G10 scales for their multi tool. And I am like highly interested in it. Field trip. Let's go look this shit up real quick. So when I saw it initially, I thought this seems a little. You know, it seems a little suspect that they're able to just is I'm OK with companies cloning. I don't like counterfeits. Those are two different things. Counterfeit is when a company's presenting information or presenting themselves to be the real product. And it's really not a clone. It's just, you know, they're literally copying what they see um, and trying to make a, a, an exact clone of that item. So if you're doing clones, you know, maybe not the best thing in the world to do. But that's still not as bad as doing a straight up counterfeit. So I'm trying to remember the name of the multi-tool company. But I want a G10 multi-tool. I already have a G10 pin by Bastion. Of course, I got tons of G10 knives. But Trayvax, and I can't remember the name of the other company. There's a very few companies that actually make G10 um, wallets. And I know Trayvax is one of them. So I think I want to check them out as well. So... Um, but we'll see we'll see if, if we can make that happen as well so 40 in seattle 40 in seattle says philip okay that's uh i don't know that seems about right for this time of the year technically we're still in winter so that would make sense happy early birthday says mike and ike's hey, appreciate you my guy appreciate you kicking the goddamn door in and making that stuff happen as well let's see am i the only one here for the free beer they said they would be here there would be free beer here oh my god sir there is no goddamn free beer not today hey, okay bro, come on now dog come on man listen if you ever find yourself in the dfw area and you want to do a man cave tour tour of the studio hit me up if i have availability we can always make stuff like that happen okay we can always make stuff like that happen just like fyi this is my man cave but i also rent this space out for podcasts so like if you're in the dfw area and you just really want to do a video podcast i own the cameras i own the microphones so i, I often oftentimes will come here have people come here and film a podcast for a couple of hours so we can do that as well it says what's your thoughts on the nutsack rut sack oh my god this commenting shit is going to make me freaking hollow point freaking all right, so what are your thoughts on the nutsack rutsack? So the nutsack rutsack, first off, hashtag freaking bars. Okay. It's a it's it's they they got that name there. I guess what I would say specifically about the rutsack is it reminds me of I have an Eberlin stock jackknife. And the jackknife has like a you know, it has an opening inside. But you, it's kind of hard to dig in there and to see what you're you're digging out and, and what you're digging up. And I don't know if I would like the rut sack because you can't fully clamshell and open it up and see what's inside. And so for me personally, I think I, I'm telling myself, like, I think I would want to be able to see it and open it and fully get in there. Nutsack, y'all have got to update the freaking website. It is so hard to just search for a term on the website. Um where is the rut sack which category would this be under maybe everyday carry i guess but yeah so you know I, I i really i want to like it but i don't think i'm gonna be a big fan of the fact that you can only access it by unrolling that top part and i'm also not a fan that i can't freaking navigate my way hey, to it bro come on now easily dog. on the 
on the website Come on, man. let's just go to all products and see if we can find it real quick good all right here it is right here so first off it is 379 goodness gracious what oh my god bro what are you talking about man all right here's the thing okay first off when you make a commitment to carry something that's wax canvas if you're gonna carry something that is uh it has i don't know if this is full grain or top grain oh it's full grain leather so it's full grain leather so that's pretty good that's the best part or one of the toughest and best part of the uh the hide of the cow the bull or whatever um i think it's the wax canvas is like 16 ounce wax canvas from like the from the um, the northeast from the new england states the leather i think comes from the pacific northwest like everything about these bags are made in america the only thing that they don't have made in america i think are zippers this doesn't have a zipper on it but when they have zippers on it i think they get their zippers or it does have a zipper from japan but everything else is from the states um this is a lot of money and i would only be able to access this thing one specific way like i would only be able to access it one specific way and i didn't think that was a big deal until i got the eberlin stock jackknife uh let's see so eberlin stock jack knife so when i got the jackknife it opens in a similar fashion and i use this for rucking but this is the main compartment you just peel the top open and dig your hand inside and freaking wish yourself luck okay it kind of gets on my nerves like it, it kind of gets on my nerves a little bit. Um, so this bag is $200. That nut sack is th almost $400. And I'm trying to think like, would I personally spend $400 on this? Probably not because I want, um, I, I want to be able to see everything inside of my bag. But if you're the type of person that wants like almost the ultimate way to not lose your shit, like it's not clamshell so you're not gonna have the shit spill open onto the deck right so this might be something that you consider for me personally it's probably a no-go because of my experience with the eberlin stock jackknife so hopefully that answers your question but as nutsack as a company oh they're bangers and i'm pretty sure that bag is a banger i uh, appreciate you watching it yeah most definitely man I, normally i'm creeping in the chat i don't normally i normally have you up on either the man cave tv uh, behind me and I'm, I'm busy working or i have you on my tv in the living room so i'm not in chat i'm just normally just watching um let's see kevin has a zero feud wallet he has a titanium key bar with a knife insert oh yeah you showed me that so i talked to key bar um he has a mr nice bar a beer bomb a duke uh cannon lip balm and my new favorite um which pin is that the feel or oh, the Phil Holter pin never heard of it I gotta look that up but you showed me your key bar setup shout out to key bar I talked to them for like 20 minutes at blade and they are making all these headways and I told them like you guys really need like a 25 30 dollar option because what I'm recommending to folks right now is starting at like 40 bucks okay so it's not horrible but it's it's sometimes it could be a little aggressive you have to use a tool to open your shit up and lo and behold yes they have a new option coming out or it's already out i didn't see it on amazon maybe it's on their website but um it may be i like the fact that they are coming out with more options if you are trying to find different key organization setups versus uh the traditional setup so these most popular options is what i'm used to but when they came through, when they came through and actually kind of gave more options, I kind of like that. So this one here, where is the new setup? Here it is right here. These, these JR, JR size, these are just uh, the smaller versions. These things are 23 bucks, 23 bucks. That's a very good price for a starting system. And then if you want to get like a G10 version, it's 29 bucks. They have a micarta for 35 bucks. So I like the fact that they brought this new lineup 
because it was kind of a tough pill to swallow to always if someone wanted to set up like mine it's like 150 dollars and i would often recommend the 40 dollar version but this might this makes a lot of sense as well so that kind of makes life a lot easier cpm always has awesome knives uh yeah scott i don't know what he does but whatever he does give me two of those okay You know what I'm saying? Whatever he does, give me two of those. Deadlock is back from the hospital after almost a year. You had to send it off or what? I'm glad you got it back. I think when you when I had you call in, I think you talked about that. Am I going to have a party? Sammy, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a goddamn member. Goddamn. We appreciate that, ma'am. So I'm not going to have like a party per se. I'm going to have a party when I turn 40. I'm going to a birthday party on leap year, which is a couple of days from now, three days from now. So one of my wife's friends, she was born on leap year in 1984. She's turning 40 or is she really turning 10? How old is she? Is she turning 10 or what? How old is she turning? Bro, what are you talking about, man? She's turning one of them, but she's having a 40th birthday party. And so we'll we'll be there for that on leap day, you know. Saying it's a school night, but leap year only comes around every four years. So we gotta kick the goddamn door in for her. Um, let's see, benchmade. You got a benchmade in the pocket? Which benchmade are you rocking? He says, "Yo, you're young, my guy. I'm 44." Now nah, we're kind of right there, man. We're like right there. It's CDC's own design, says Michael. Yeah, so it's their design, but it's still private label. So it's there. So private label, as I mentioned earlier, like they have in the in-house designers, but they it's still manufactured in China by QSP. And so, you know, it may have a different the scales may be different, but the baseline for the knife is some knife that we don't that, you know, QSP is not coming out with a, a whole line for CDC's. Uh, knives at least not in my, my not in my experience from writing contracts i've been writing contracts since 2006 these companies aren't if you're going to private label something from them they are not going to produce a whole swiss machine or one specific machine for your products just because you have a small deviation uh, they normally would just for the lack of a better term put in a different mode Let's see. Pick it up the rat one in a few days. I wish it could come in a Tanto blade or make a model similar to cause Tanto. In my opinion, it's more useful shape. Tanto is useful, but the rat is so freaking humongous. I don't even know if you want a Tanto blade. The rat one is humongous. Like I used to have a rat too. I gave it away. Um, I don't know if they make a, I know I, my, my rat is an OS eight, an AUS eight blade steel. It's fine. I just have to sharpen it more often i have so many knives that that knife doesn't get carried very often when i do carry it, it's it's sharp because i don't carry it very often if to, if it's your only knife expect to have to sharpen it a little bit more often but the i know that they're making all sorts of different versions of the rat one and it's all about do you want to um how much do you want to spend i don't think they make it in any different blade shapes i know they make it in different blade steels though so they got the rat one the rat two um yeah so all sorts of different options but they're all the same shape for the blade it's just really about how big do you want it to be and what color do you want coating uh which one is your flavor so if i think if i did this all over again i would probably get a rat two and i would look to get like a maybe a d2 or I don't even know what what they make it out of specifically. But if I wanted to carry it more, I know I wouldn't want to have this AUS-8 because it does need more sharpening more often than not. It was hell on it was hell on earth today. Um and for hood. Yeah, that sounds about right. Red Lobo, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a goddamn member. God, 82 in Houston. 82 in the middle of the night. It is too freaking hot. Too freaking hot. I'm thinking about pulling the trigger on it in the double admin. So I do have the double admin pouch. 
I'm staring at it right now. I love the double admin pouch. I will say this though. The double admin pouch, the Molly strips seem to be a different width than common Molly on other items. So like I'm used to Molly pals or Molly being a certain width so I can stick like a certain size knife or multi-tool or whatever. What I've noticed with Nutsacks, whether it be the double admin or the admin pouch or the sling bag, the Molly doesn't seem to be as wide as other Molly. So I can't put like my Leatherman Wave or my Free P4 directly in the Molly. And maybe maybe I'm tripping. Maybe it's the normal size for everything, right? But it just, it just feels like it's a different size. You know, so something to think about. What was the best thing you saw from Blade Texas? Well, one of the best things that I saw in Blade Texas is I saw Dead Recognize. Now, Dead Recognize, I immediately grew a bias for the knives, okay? First off, they decided that they were going to come out with like this premium line of button lock knives. And they all had this beautiful stone washed finishes on them. They're very pricey. Don't get it twisted. But the thing that kind of grabbed me by the freaking boss Pause. literally had to be that one of the co-owners is a Marine. He's a, 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 he's a recon Marine. He just got out last year. He just started this company with his partner, uh, not his like partner in life, but his partner in the company. And I think August of last year, and they're already banging out some fantastic looking knives. Now the prices are, there's some pricey boys. I think um, one of the ones I looked at was like 400 bucks. This one, yeah, $435. I don't get it twisted. I held this in my hand. The reason that I wouldn't make the purchase on their knives right now is because they only make their knives at this point out of aluminum and titanium. I want a composite material uh, or a stabilized wood. So I would love to, if they made knives out of micarta or G10 or some type of stabilized wood that would be suitable to be on a knife for years and years and years. They're not doing that yet. And so as much as I love the concept of these knives, they have a patent pending for their locking system. They look really, they look fantastic. They are a hundred percent made in America all the way down to the screws. That's why the price point is so high. And I can understand it, but I'm not spending the money, even though this one right here, this RB142, whatever this shit is called, the Ridgeback, this felt fantastic in the hands because of the actual ridge, these ridges on the scales. They felt, it felt fantastic in the hand, but I still don't like to have um, titanium, not spending that much money. Um, so that was one of my favorites. Another favorite of mine had to be auxiliary manufacturing. I know you guys have probably heard of this before. Um, this was my first time being introduced to them. So his OG knife, the first one that he started making nine or 10 years ago is this knife here. It's not letting me click on it. Um, but his knives are fantastic. And the one thing that I like about them is that they seem to be very, very, he's really coming out with whether they're wraps or G10 scales or whatever. He seems to be really, really dedicated to making these things better. This is his most popular knife right now. This is called the Pocket Bowie. I thought it was a super interesting knife. I mean, it was a very interesting knife. It feels good in the hands. I can imagine wearing gloves, having bloody hands, having water on my hands and still being able to use this knife. So it's a fantastic knife. Uh, he sent some of these out. He sent one to Everyday Minimalist. He sent them to Best Damn EDC. Any, a lot of creators have had these Jeremy Sires. Um, so I really want a review from somebody that hard uses these. Not, not not When I say hard use, I'm not talking about cutting through 17 pieces of cardboard. I mean, like, you know, you took it with you hunting. You process an animal. Maybe you used it to, to quickly do some damage to the side of a tree or something like that. Some shit that I would do if I was taking these things hunting. So I thought this was interesting. The third one that I thought was interesting was the Terrain 365 knives. I didn't, 
I'm pretty sure you guys may have heard this before. It's called a den, uh, den, den trick, den trick composite. I'm not probably mispronouncing that. I don't even know. Every single one of his knives don't have any steel in them. They don't have any. They're not. They're non-magnetic. Every single knife you can take to the bottom of the ocean, leave it there for six years, grab the knife, and it will not rust. It will not rust. It, the concept behind these knives blew my freaking mind. Okay. Now. The knives are pretty pricey boys as you can see these things are coming in with 300 and something bucks 275 um but the fact that you can take one of these knives and say for instance you're camping you're hunting and you fall asleep and i've done this before and you don't put all your shit away you're on your own camping property on your own hunting property and you don't put everything away your kitchenware your cutlery stuff and maybe one of those things you failed to put away is a knife. Some knives could rust literally overnight. Well, this is one of those knives that will not do that. I couldn't swallow spending $379 on it, even though it is G2, which G2 gets grandpa excited. It does have like this. I think it has tritium or it has a loom in the thumb stud. Like the thumb stud looks super unique. Or maybe it was Jade. I don't know. I, I forgot to ask him about the thumb stud. Something, something's unique about the thumb stud. Titanium hardware, titanium pocket clip uh, to frame lock. So it's a really nice knife. He did disclose to me that you cannot bang on these knives, okay? You can't hit them with a log. You can't use them in a pinch. They're not designed for that. So, um, so those are probably some of the most interesting things that I saw. The next one probably be, had to be another pickup that I had. So the, um, an OTF, right? So we had to really fuck with an OTF. So we have the TACCOM. This is the TACCOM Bulldog. Never heard of TACCOM, but I have heard of TAC Knives. So TAC Knives rebranded themselves and they started a new line of OTF knives called TACCOM. They are um, OEM through Best Tech. It's a, it's a private, um, private label. And so they designed these in collaboration with Best Tech and Best Tech actually is making these for them. And this is a fantastic feeling OTF. OK, um, I like the fact that first off, the, I was most nervous. The two things, the reason why I never had an OTF before is the price, number one. But number two is I'm very concerned about misfires. I don't want an OTF misfiring in my pocket. And so this one here is is almost impossible to push with your um push this with your your index so it's a, you can't push this open with your index meaning it's less likely that you're going to accidentally deploy this thing which i think is fantastic has jipping on both sides of the ramp has a lot of jipping on it and it has a sheet foot um style blade m390 blade steel has a stone wash finish it has play in the blade which was important to me as well i didn't want to get a cheap otf that had no play because i didn't want it to gum up or not work correctly and it had g10 scales those were things that were really important to me and this thing has all of them so um i like this the uh another thing it has it does have a little bit of protection it if you hit something it won't fully deploy so if we do this it won't fully deploy. It keeps you from accidentally puncturing through something. I like that as well. So I like that safety feature. And to redeploy it, you kind of just whip it out and it's ready to go all over again. I think that the action on the Microtech is probably faster. But for the price point of this thing, I think it was reasonably priced. How much is it on their website? Let's do a field trip. Let's look that up real quick. And I saw someone join members. Let me see. Who did I? Um, well, I'll see who that was here in a second. Anyways, let's see. So how much is it on their website? TACCOM OTF. So this is what the website is looking like. The Bulldog 229 on the website. This is for a drop point, but you can actually get the sheep's foot. It's still 229. The table price was different. Obviously, table prices at these blade shows are 
are different versus what you're paying on the website but it's in stock like i said it's oem through best tech i haven't had a bad experience with best tech as of yet and i thought this was a pretty good looking otf and i actually like the price that i got too so you know so something interesting to be able to use i want to kind of run it through his paces i saw that there was a um you know i saw Axel, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but I saw Zach in the wild. He did a video on these knives. I thought they were fantastic looking, but as soon as he did his video, they all damn near instantly sold out. Okay. And they really haven't been back in stock ever since to the point where his video did so well. They did it. They did an exclusive with him, the shift 3.0, a Zach in the wild exclusive. But um, when he showed the knife, I thought it looked really good. I don't think he had the aluminium version. I think he had, I think he had this version, which is $315. It seemed like a great knife. It's first off, it's never in stock. That's an issue. I love the fact that it was Tanto. So that was something that I like the fact that it was made in the States. The one that I have is obviously not made in the States and you're getting CPM Magna cut. So, you know, those are things that are attractive about it, but I don't intend to really hard use my OTF. So as much as I thought this was very attractive, I didn't want to spend more than I really didn't want to spend more than 250 bucks on something like that. And you're not going to get that with Microtech. You're not going to get that with what's what Kershaw's OTF. I, I, don't even, I don't even know what that's called. They had a lot of those at the show as well. Um, So I, I found this to be very interesting. I thought it looked really good. So I, I really just wanted to be able to just see what my full opinion will be about this. And it's a uh, it's also reversible. So if you're left handed, you're not asked out, which I think is a good thing. You don't have to worry about anything like that. So super interesting kind of setup here. And I like the fact it comes in this freaking nice little case. Like, you know, a lot of times we're used to getting our knives in boxes like this. Right. And the fact that you're getting it in a nice little reusable case with a little padding inside and you can just use this as you see fit i thought was a pretty good touch so that's always a nice thing and to consider getting something from kershaw to get one of their otfs then you can get the live wire it's about the same price as the bulldog these are made in the states as well but i wanted to get something a little bit different they had live wires uh at the show i think the table price for one of these was like 219 so what saving 10 bucks but um yeah i'm i'm pretty happy with the what i got so far so pretty happy with what we got so far but you know we'll see how it goes we shall see how it goes overall maybe i'll make a, a, a an additional acquisition as well uh, let's see what old, what old son is here as well sir thanks for stopping by thanks for being a goddamn member God, we appreciate that man we well appreciate it he says late still kicking in that goddamn door hey listen widow thanks for kicking the door in as well alex is here thanks for kicking the door in those scales are sweet are you talking about on the otf i love the 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 i don't obviously this has to be cnc machined or something like that because to get the scales to look like this like the contouring on there i i'm excited to use this with gloves on if i have bloody hands if i have wet hands dirt on my hands i don't think this is going to slip out of my hands like nothing about this says slip out of hands so i like that as well so we'll see how this goes overall and i like the blade shape i don't this is the first maybe only maybe second knife i have that sheep's foot and i like tanto more because tantos are really really good for getting in zip ties and shit like that but i want to be able to get up on this blade and i think i'll have that opportunity to do that with this one as well the next pickup was kind of a snoozer um so of course big idea design i wanted to just get another i, I use pins all the time i wanted another mini pin for my coffee mess hey, bro, come i'm on just now, okay now. listen come on man my current pin at my coffee mess is Olight's mini twist or mini click pin or twist pin whatever that shit is I don't like that shit I don't like that shit I literally only use that Olight uh pin to write down notes about coffee that I'm drinking 
And I want this pen to live in my coffee area. If it grows legs, then so what? I think this thing's what, like 20 bucks or something like that. Just a little, this, it, it reminds me of the twist version of my copper pen. Um, but this one is aluminum and just big idea design. Nothing super special about it. Of course, the table price is much cheaper than it is online. And it comes with a little bead, which I don't normally like beads, but these pins are so incredibly small. This makes it easier to grab out of whatever you have it stored in. So pick that up. I almost picked up uh, the reason I stopped by Big Idea Designs booth, though, or their table is because I was I wanted to check out their field watch. I really wanted to check out the field watch. Guys, I I don't think I could ever pull the trigger on their field watch and. I don't want to shit on a product that I don't own, but I own a lot of field watches. Okay. I'm wearing one of my favorite field watches now by VAR. This is the A12 Dirty Dozen. This 36 millimeter field watch weighs more than every single big idea design watch that they have. It has more features than the big idea design watches. And that's something that was important to me. So if I go look at their website, um, field watch big idea design field watch so a couple of things i did not like is first off every single one of their watches the indices um the the, the entire case none of them have um numbers and i like numbers on my watches if i don't have numbers it feels like a dive watch so when i looked at it i said well i saw on your website you had something called the ti daily solar where is that they were like oh well technically um, I, I don't know if he said that that was a, not a field watch or I don't know what he described it. It looks like a field watch to me. Okay. All they had on the table was these $499 field watches. And when I got them in my hands, I was like, um, I, I get what, you know, saying I understand, I understand the appeal of them. And Big Idea Design, this is not their first rodeo. They they got this into the hands of a bunch of creators. They sent one to Everyday Minimalist. Of course, they sent one to Taylor Martin. They sent one to a lot of different folks. And I was watching their videos and I was like, man, this thing looks super interesting. But it just didn't really do it for me. Not for $500. Um, so I didn't want to walk away with nothing. So I did end up picking up a pen. So, of course, we got that as well. So... Of course, we got a lot of um, before we jump into all these little, little R.E.s and patches and shit like that. Do me a favor and slap that goddamn like button real quick, man. Let that shit go on. Do that real quick while I get my freaking stick relit. Let me, uh, ladies, keep them entertained just for a second while I get my stick relit. I appreciate that. Hit that goddamn like button, man. Put me back in the algorithm. Perfect. Get off that pole. Ladies, get down off that pole. Appreciate that. So, I, listen, the next category of things that I got. So, I got something else from, um, from Blade, but I can't show it yet. I got that item that I got is free. Oh, and for disclosure, the CDC is was free. They gave that to me. Um, I was ready to pay for it, but on some love type shit they gave that stuff and we appreciate that stuff man okay. Jaden said he was at blade looking for a good flipper and ended up with a gravity knife it's so crazy because that riot or however you pronounce it that gravity knife i feel like daily carry co has the same gravity knife maybe i'm tripping i'm not i'm not really sure but they they feel similar right let me look up your gravity knife and then let me go grab the daily carry co like they oh no this isn't the same one or maybe it is hold on so they got no i don't think these actually yes this is the one that i saw 
Okay. So while I was there, I saw the. <clears throat> they were showing me this Tanto manual OTF gravity knife. I said, man, this looks so similar to Daily Carry Co's. I don't know if they are white glove or private label or whatever. But they were like so super similar. Let me grab mine real quick, man. Let me see if they're the same thing. Because I, I I don't know if they um. So before we before I show mine, what is the blade on this? So this is L Max. So I like L Max. I only have one knife that's L Max. It's the uh, Tops knives. Uh, mini Scandi folder. It's a Tanto G10 and titanium scales mixed together. Okay, so that's an interesting mix. And then we got. All right, so I don't even know if these have them in here anymore. I've like messed around with all these boxes so much. Nope, that's not in there. This one is. Okay, so this is one. Of... No, this is not their. This is not the, uh, this is kind of the one that flips out and around and all that type of stuff. So this one was interesting as well, but the mini gravity knife, I feel like they're, they're maybe made at the same place or, or out of the same factory. Maybe I'm tripping. Now this is the mini version of it. It doesn't have that same lockup but it still kind of has the, the gravity features to it. It still has that aggressive blade shape, Tanto style. This is Magna Cut, so it's not the uh, L Max. But um, I don't know, these knives are nice novelty items. They're kind of dangerous to hand to somebody if they don't know what the F they're doing, right? I have the full size version of this. I don't know where the hell it's at. It's, it's around here somewhere. So I thought these were cool, but I don't know, man. It says, Ron says, I have that knife that you're showing right now. It's a nice little knife. It's the uh, TI Slide Mini M3. It's a M3. No, this is M390 blade. Excuse me. I thought it was Magna Cut. M390 blade on this one. But um, yeah, I think gravity knives are nice novelty items, nice talking points. I don't know if it's something that I would necessarily... Um, carry every day i think it might get a little annoying of course we got to talk about these re's man i'm not a re guy okay i'm not I'm not a huge re guy um oh you said cranes cutlery manufactures them okay nice okay so some of these are probably going to be giveaways i'll just give them the folks because I'm not a real big uh, RE guy, but I did think that some of these were super unique. So this Ox Manufacturing, it looks like a stick of TNT. That one's, that one's actually kind of unique. But the one that I thought was most unique was this freaking one that looks like Dare, Dare to keep kids off drugs, except this one is uh, Knives Rule Everything Around Me from Ox Manufacturing. I thought this one was pretty unique. I actually think I would rock this one on one of my rug packs or something like that. It's not a really a small RE, it's more of a patch size, which is kind of more my flavor. So that kind of makes sense as well. He says, what was that knife that was in the thumbnail? The knife in the thumbnail was one of these two. It had to either be this um, Tacom OTF or it was the CDC Hansen. Those are the only two I had in the thumbnail. So these are the two knives, the knife pickups. So both of these are, um, the CDC is actually interesting. It's very, very, like I say, it's gonna take a lot of breaking in. I'm not gonna put any oil on it. I'm just gonna action the knife. Hopefully the parts loosen themselves up and wear down a little bit. It, it gets a little bit easier to use because right now using the thumbnail, using the thumb studs, actually hurts like it's it's literally painful to use the thumb studs which is weird for a knife to come out the box like that right so it's something to think about as well 
But the flipper works just fine, so I use that. Uh, let's see. He says Semper Five Marine. Arr, appreciate you kicking a goddamn door in, Constantine. It's not an everyday knife. Yeah, these gravity knives are not really an everyday knife. It's a knife. You're listen. There's a lot of times I'm going to a cigar lounge. I'm going to some of my buddies' house. Clay, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a goddamn member. We appreciate that, man. Um, so if I'm going to a cigar lounge, if I'm going to a buddy's house, and I'm we're just gonna be shooting the shit. We're gonna be sitting around for a while. We're not gonna be doing a whole lot. I would take a gravity knife. I would take an OTF. You know, something where it's a talking point. But this OTF purchase or any of these gravity knife purchases would not be a normal purchase for me. My birthday is tomorrow. That's the only reason why I felt like kind of like, hey, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll you know, um, spoil myself and, and pick up a um, pick up a couple of knives. But do I want to necessarily make these normal purchases? Is it even normally t the type of recommendation that I make on my channel? Not really. So it's something to think about as well. So they got the. So this is all the slide lineup that they have on Daily Carry Co. The one that I have is the mini. I have the TI slide, which is this one right here. And I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. It's literally somewhere in this man cave. But you see how he's opening it up. It's cool and all. You know, it's, it's something. It's a nice talking piece. And it's fun to use and all that type of stuff. And I have the mini version as well. I also have this big obnoxious pocket pal. This pocket pal literally sits on top of my man cave, um, on my man cave fridge. And you can use that to open up a bottle of suds. It, it's a pry bar, but you know, it's titanium. It's really thick. I don't carry pry bars. My multi-tool has a, has a slotted screwdriver in it. I could just use that if I need to pry some shit so it's it's a nice little pocket tool if you want a pry bar it's only 38 bucks and it's I, i'm assuming it's titanium um well it says grade five titanium so i thought it was maybe titanium alloy i don't know so and the um where's the other knife oh this one right here this mag blade magnetic knife this one actually makes me nervous every time i open it Every time I open this knife, I feel like I'm going to slice my fingers off. That's a lot to ask for for a freaking $200 knife, right? Every time you open it, you feel like you're going to slice your own freaking finger off. Um, But it's a it's a unique knife as well. It's not really one of those knives that you can quickly. I guess you could one hand it. This guy's one handed in this photo, but not really. It says, Darth says, is there a knife that I really want, but I haven't pulled the trigger on or I can't pull the trigger on? That's a good question. Um, You know what? There is a knife. There is a knife. Let me look it up because I always get the name wrong. It's not the not the spider code. Yojimbo, Yojumbo. It's not that one. It's one of its brothers. Let's do a quick little field trip. Field trip. We'll go to the base website. Tend to be where I buy my Spyderco knives. And I picked up the Shaman last year. That was my Spyderco purchase last year. It was freaking 270 bucks. It was a big nut to swallow. And I just told myself I don't intend to buy another Spyderco for quite a while. So a lot of people have the Yojimbo 4 or 3 or whatever version they're on right here too that's what it is a lot of people have this the yojimbo too but what i thought was more interesting was this canis if i'm pronouncing that correctly i like the way this looks this looks like i could really pinch the back of this blade and use it like this really looks like i could pinch the back of this blade and get up on it and use it uh cpm s 30 v steel it has the Spyderco compression lock. It's a warning style blade. This one is what a lot of people have in rock. And I kind of want to be different. This one also is a CPM S30V steel. It's only $197 on base tax free. So that would be how much I will pay out the door. 
pocket clip is ambidextrous. That's great. G10 scales. That all that's fantastic. But this one's more attractive to me. I love the way the scales look. I love the way the blade shape is. I love this indention on the blade. I don't know how you would describe that, but it's just a super unique knife that, um, and this is made in Taiwan. So this is one of the Taiwanese knives. And Mr. Goods, Mr. Goody says, when am I going to do a uh, truck vehicle loadout update? That's a good question. I was actually thinking about this the other day, Mr. Goody, because I was like, I've done a, I did a full EDC video on my truck four months ago and a lot of stuff hasn't changed, but I thought maybe I should do micro videos on different items that I have on my vehicle that might help you make decisions about things that you do and don't want to upgrade. So maybe I do a video on the cabin of my truck and what's in my, because listen, a lot of stuff when it comes to my my loadout for my truck is a primary secondary tertiary uh loadout so primary is anything i can touch while i'm driving or while i'm at a red light okay so anything that i can get at, while i'm at a red light you know while i'm chilling out that's my primary my secondary is anything i gotta unsnap my seat belt and grab that's normally in the back seat underneath the back seat you know something like that and then tertiary is everything in the bed of my truck shit that i gotta physically get out the truck to grab so i know i did a uh, video but it's been a few months and i didn't do really a breakdown of every individual section oh it's been seven months what hey bro come on now dog come on man i feel like i did this video three months ago youtube moves really freaking fast does it not <laughs> It moves really fast, does it not? <laughs> that to recover another vehicle to recover. Mute that real quick. But I've done this full video, but I feel like I should really dive deep. So like I have this broken up primary, secondary, tertiary. I have it broken up, but maybe I should just do a video that talks about why do I keep this in my primary section? How is it useful? I've changed some of this stuff out. Um, so that's a really good, that's a really good point, Mr. Goody. I think I owe that. I think I owe that. Like this nutsack admin pouch, I've since given that away. I now have an alpaca metro pouch in there. Um, I don't carry that bench made in there anymore. So yeah, I probably should do an update. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. It says I should look at the. Let's see. You should look at F2's custom SAKs. He puts the Spider Code Dragonfly blades in them. Field trip, Jaden. Let's do a field trip. So F2 custom SAK. The thing about those is, um, does he warranty them? Because obviously he's modifying them. If I have any issues with them, like how's that warranty process? How's that warranty process? Wow. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. He's putting these blades inside of these SAKs. And that I don't know if that's who's going to warranty, you know, what happens. I guess it's, it's a SAK. If you have an issue with it, just take it apart and fix it yourself. It's not really that complicated. But if you want it to be all in one and be warranty, Kevin showed me his setup. And key bar is now putting knives inside of their key systems and these would be i mean this shit's 174 dollars, so i don't know about this one huh? what this is this is pricey bro what are you talking about man but they have started including knives not just utility knives but like full i think they i don't know what blade steel they were and i'm not seeing it on the website as i here it is right here is this it here no that wasn't the blade that wasn't the knife there here it is right here. They have Magna Cut blade inserts. Now it's $149. That's that's a pricey boy. So the um but if you want something from a company where if you have an issue they're going to warranty it, then you might want to look at you know what I'm saying? You might want to look at the um key bar system.
yo let's kick the motherfucking door in says tristan what up man thanks for kicking the door in i picked up the snack time sling and the waterfeld shutter sling and i'm loving it thanks to you drew sir you got a good goddamn head on your shoulders okay a good head on your shoulders And you know what's so crazy, Drew, is that I make no money from those companies. Data Crew is him, and I think his brother or his cousin, Los, is making those those um, out of his house. I think he just got a storefront. He has a storefront, but he just sells stuff in his storefront. He doesn't manufacture there. And Waterfell is a full fledged company, but they don't have, you know, they don't have an affiliate program or anything like that. And it didn't matter to me because Waterfell. The bag was so freaking fire. I'm staring at it right now. I haven't carried it in over a month. And when I carry the watered felt bag, it just feels so freaking premium. They cost freaking premium. Don't get it twisted. Like this bag is $189 and it's really going to be over $200 because you should buy the grab, the optional grab handle, which is top handle right here. You need the top handle. But if I'm going to get the compact version, I'm going to get it in wax canvas. This is going to cost me $214. This is, they are rivaling Nutsack, right? They are rivaling Nutsack. Um, you know, so it's something to think about. It's a fantastic sling bag. So I'm glad you picked it up and I'm glad you're enjoying it as well. Make sure you hit that like button. I appreciate that, Ron. It says, I appreciate the video that you did on the Tom Talk. I've been looking at them. What do you think of the other backpacks that they make? I saw one that was like $100 or something like that. So for disclosure, Tristan. So when I first started doing Tom Talk videos, it was everything that I did, I purchased myself, right? So I bought a Tom Talk video or I bought a Tom Talk sling bag. Um, I think it was over two years ago now so i did this video here called tom talk sling bag review everything else is hype the only sling bag you'll ever need i bought that i bought that bag with my own money the red bag that you see me wearing i bought that with my own money but tom talk noticed that my videos got views and then they started sending me bags and they also started sponsoring videos so i always disclose when i'm doing one of those two okay for instance this tan bag right here, that was a sponsored video, but it was still a great sling bag, right? The video that I did earlier today was a sponsored video. Now, my thoughts on Tom Talk overall, this tech pouch right here, they sent this to me. It wasn't a sponsored video. They just sent me the pouch for free. So they, they always try to disclose that. But here's my thoughts on Tom Talk. And I told this that I told this directly to them is Tom Talk is a fantastic deal, but when you get the bag in your hand, you can always tell where they cut corners. You can all, you can just if if you handle bags often, instantly you can tell where they cut corners. You can say, "Oh man, this sling bag is so perfect," but it sucks that it's always in horizontal mode, like it can't be really in vertical or forty-five degree angle mode because that's just the way that the sling is shaped, right? Or you may get a, a cheaper sling and you may notice that it doesn't have aqua guard zippers on it or it doesn't have a high vis interior on it. So the reason that Tom Talk and companies like Inatech and Alpaca, well, Alpaca is doing a great job as well. They give you a great product because you can tell where they skipped a few steps, whereas GoRuck, Mystery Ranch, Eberlin Stock, um, Air, chrome and well chrome industries as well you can tell those bags are not they're not skipping stuff right so i'm a big fan of tom talk i'm actually doing another uh i'm checking out another sling that they have coming out in march this sling is a freaking big boy i'm not gonna lie to you and i've been testing this thing out already for a while it's, it's a big boy i um uh, i think that this would be a sling that i would use for travel or whenever I'm riding one of my one wheels or an e-bike, but to just walk around with this thing on, this thing is huge. And I got kids, I got five kids, okay? I'm still carrying diapers. I'm still carrying wipes. I have to 
bring a change of clothes because my three-year-old is he's almost done being potty trained he has a few accidents every now and again and it's still a freaking big ass sling but i like to kind of just differentiate between the two but i like tom talk I, I do enjoy them i think they do a good job what are my thoughts on trump's new kicks here's my thoughts on those so you know trump came out with the new go sneakers i don't know if unless you're living under a rock then you know you probably heard of them and if you are in, living under a rock and you haven't heard of them then you don't have to worry about looking at these freaking uh, kicks because they are freaking bright okay <laughs> Here's my issue with these sneakers, all right? I'm not a sneaker head, but I do purchase sneakers every now and again. Um, I guess the issue that I have with the sneakers is every single pair of sneakers, whether they're Nike Air Force Ones, freaking Skechers, uh, Saucony, uh, Adidas, whatever, they're all made of very cheap materials that are not gonna last a long time normally in sweatshops but even jordans whatever um but the price kind of corresponds with that so if i get a pair of air force ones and i spend you know maybe 180 dollars on them i understand okay for these materials this is how much these cost these those sneakers are 400 dollars because they're branded because of his branding and whether you love trump or hate trump I, I just think they're really ex they're really pricey they're really expensive and they're gold you're gonna stand out like a sore thumb and if that's what you, you want to stand out then cool i have some freaking bedazzled shoes that mrs x bought me but um but my biggest issue is is on their website they disclose that the photo on their website is just a is not a representation of the actual sneaker that you're gonna receive hey bro come what? on now, dog come on man so the sneaker that i saw no trump's a real human i saw him handling some sneakers the pictures that i've seen all over the internet they may not be the sneakers that i receive when i make the purchase no i don't like that shit. I, i'm not a fan of that so i uh i'm, I'm not a fan that when you make that purchase, you might receive something different. I, I personally would be fucking PO'd. I don't care who they, who the person is, right? It's just something to think about. That's a that's a pricey boy. Um, let's see. And make sure, oh, put a Q colon in front of your question. That would help me find it a little bit easier. I don't want you to think that I'm skipping past anything on there or anything like that. I saw, oh yeah, so the $100 ones, yeah, I can recommend Tom Talk. The bag that I checked out today, my recommendation for that bag that I that I featured today is if you can get it around 180 maybe, but the, the MSRP, I wouldn't buy it at $209. That's just my opinion. Thoughts on the field craft survival panty pack, uh, fanny pack, larger is the one field trip. Let's look that shit up real quick, Tristan. So you said the field <clears throat> craft survival fanny. Now, what's what makes it survival is the question that I have. Like, is it um, it's 87 bucks. Well, first off, you're smart if you freaking have a, a good looking bra like this, promote your shit, okay? I think I've looked at this pack before. Um, so aesthetic wise, I like the way it looks more than the Vertex Sock P, but I don't know anything about these folks. This is, so I don't know if I can give you a, my full thoughts about it. So it's, oh my God, 500D Cordura. That's rough. So that the break-in process on 500D could be rough. Like when you get this, it might take a while to break it in. And it's a fanny pack. So I guess the quickest way to break it in might 
throw it in the dryer with a wet towel and some sneakers or something like that. Um, it looks like it has a CCW component. It looks like somebody was reaching there and pulling out a boomstick. I can't really tell, though. So I don't know a lot about it. It's $89. When I think about this, I think about Vertex just came out with their new Sock P fanny. And the tactical fannies that they just came out with, um, I think that these are really good. Okay. First off, full disclosure, Vertex sends me this shit. And if you use my if you use code Marine X when you check out, you get 15% off. Or you might even you might even get more than 15% off. Let's throw it in the cart and see how much we get off real quick. So if I throw green, throw it in the cart. I think the discount code is Marine X. Let's check it out. Um but yeah, so I think that these are more functional. The one that you just mentioned looks better. And I'm checking out now. I'm just trying to see how much this is. Did not dox my address. Give me a second. So yeah, my discount code gets you 25% off. So I, I think that this this pouch um has more function to it. Like the very front of this is specifically designed for your cell phone. It um I have one right over here, as a matter of fact. It I like it a lot, but the one that you just just showed looks way better than this. This one costs a little bit more, um, but this one's specifically designed for CCW. So if you don't want to have to carry on body, but you want to carry like damn near on body, this might be something that you want to do. It has a nice mesh pocket on the inside, has webbing on the inside. It's, it's, this is a really good fanny pack. You know what I'm saying? So that's the, that's the name of the company. I got it. Okay. So neck and neck, I would say for aesthetics, I would go with the one you just said, but for functionality, <clears throat> I would either go with Vertex or I would look at a, a 511 sling, even though 511 is a little bit too tactical looking for me. Let me grab mine real quick. So like these these bags here, as mentioned, it has the little dedicated cell phone part. And this is I haven't even wore this shit yet. This is version two of the of the sock P. I have the first one, which I don't carry very often. They sent this to me, and I I don't know. Maybe I'll check it out. Maybe I won't. Whenever Vertex sends me stuff, I don't. You know, one thing I like about them is they don't pressure you. I don't have to give them any content. Don't have to make any videos. But this front area is dedicated for a cell phone. So that's pretty good stuff as well. Then right behind it, you got this little mesh area where you can put stuff inside. You can kind of see what's in there. You got this little slip areas and molly area where you can put multi-tools or keys or whatever you want to put back there. And then you have the full-fledged um, CCW area with already an included. Um, I don't know if it's going to fit your boomstick, but it already includes a holster. So this has a lot of functionality. It also has a removable part and you can attach their rapid access pull tab. And what this thing does is when you put this on the back, it replaces one of these key, these uh, pull tabs. So if you had to quickly access your boomstick, you can pull this, look how fat this thing is. So if you're in a, a, a situation where you need to quickly reflexively pull this as fast as you can you can get your hand on this and rip open the ccw part very fast so this is like a full system for a ccw whereas the one that you just showed is um i just i honestly think it looked way better i will give you that this one this one particularly looks way better the field craft the field craft edc fanny pack looks better so but hopefully that answers your question. Looking for wax canvas back for my EDC, any recommendations? So I've only, I only have experience with three companies when it comes with wax canvas. I can put them in order of favorite to lease William. Um, my favorite sling bag right now is the Waterfelt. It's $189. 
um but it's it has a lot of like um it doesn't have as much like modularity as the nutsack morale sling but i love the way that it looks and i love the way it functions right behind that is the nutsack morale sling and then behind that would be the sling bag that comes from roaring fire i forget the name of it but there's his wax canvas as well those are the only three wax canvas um slings that i've had now you're saying that you want a, a bag for your for your edc the only full-size bag that i have would be this right here this is the nutsack tote bag this is wax canvas i use this as and uh, everyday carry bag. So I was using this the other, literally when I went to go get my, I had to go get my dreads redone or whatever. I packed my work computer in here, threw some field notes in here. I love that it has all these outer pockets because I can quickly say, for instance, I need to be out of the door in minutes. I mean, I got like minutes to get out the door. I can grab this, throw a laptop in here, a tablet in here, some diapers, wipes, clothes, and I'm gone. Boom, I'm out the door. That's why I like this. I think it's like, I don't know how much this is. Field trip. Let's look this shit up real quick. So that's like the, the tote. And then I have a full size duffel. Um, and for disclosure, I bought that. I bought that tote bag. Nutsack did not send that to me. I wish they did though. Cause I think it was like 150 bucks or some shit like that. Yeah. It's $150. Actually, now that I've had it for, it's going on six months this is a really good price now that i've had this for six months i've used it for edc i've used this as like an impromptu handyman bag i've used this as a diaper bag this is actually a really good price because you can throw as mentioned you can throw tools in here but you can also turn it into an edc bag the only complaint i have about it and i've done a full video on this you can check it out on my channel is it doesn't have any snap closures so it's always open and the inside pockets because it's always open every single pocket to slip pocket if they can give me one zipper that will be great i would love to know that i put my my key fob or some type of keys inside of this bag and they're not going to go if i put them in the back of my truck it's not going to fall out so that's um that's the only thing i could say but this is probably my favorite full size wax canvas bag that i rock out with ron says what will be a good pack for riding on an e-bike so i ride an e-bike every day or almost every day ron in the bag that i i wear if i'm not testing a bag like right now i'm testing out a go ruck gr2 so i'm wearing that bag a whole lot but when i'm not testing out a bag I wear a Vertex Ready Pack 2.0. The 2.0 is, um, I like it, me personally, I like it a little bit more than the 3.0. And I've done a, matter of fact, I've done a full video on it. If you if you Google Vertex Ready Pack, I've done a video of comparing the 2.0 versus the 3.0. I like the 2.0 a little bit better. Um, but this is what I wear full size because I need a way to lock up my e-bike when I get to my destination. I could put a full size bike lock in there, not like a chain, but like a full size, full fledged bike lock. And I can also throw groceries in there. And um, so this is what I wear when I want to if I'm going to be on my e-bike for miles. If I'm going on a 20 or 30 mile ride on my e-bike, I wear this bag. So um, if I'm going on a quick ride, I, I would normally just grab a sling bag. Sling bags get a little uncomfortable on an e-bike. I'm not going to lie to you. They kind of move around a lot. And I also wouldn't spend $223 on this. If you're going to buy this, get it on Amazon because this is their older model and it's no reason to spend full price on this. So you probably can find it on Amazon for much cheaper than $220 or whatever they had it for. So you can get this here. What do they have this for? 262. But if you go through these different colors, you can probably find a color that doesn't, it's not that, that full price and find something that works for you. So hopefully that answers your question. X, I know you got boomsticks. Do you not talk about them because of YouTube demonetization or you just don't want to? That's a good question. So on my most recent full EDC video, 
I talked about my boomstick, which the 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 CCW that I carry is a J Frame Smith and Wesson hammerless uh, Saturday night special, and I like that because it has no safety, it has no hammer. So if I'm nervous, if I'm my palms are sweaty, I don't have to worry about disengaging a safety or anything like that. Uh, shout out to all the tactical bros that have lasers and sights and all that shit on there. Hey, bro, come okay. on now. Okay, shout out to you, man. Come on, man. But I will say that uh, I've used my weapon in Afghanistan. And when I shot my weapon in Afghanistan towards, you know, humans, I was nervous. And so all that shit didn't matter. Um, I learned how to use a weapon with iron sights. I prefer to use a weapon with iron sights, well, handguns with iron sights. But to answer your question more directly, YouTube has a lot of really funny rules when it comes to boomsticks. On live streams, you cannot handle weapons at all. So like right now, if I want to go grab my, I'm staring at my boomstick. If I want to go grab it, show it to you, this video, this live stream could get shut down. That's not allowed. But on a video on demand, like a video that I upload, I could fully break down a, a boomstick, take it out, fire it all that type of stuff. So YouTube has so many weird rules about boomsticks. I just prefer not to talk about them. YouTube is a hobby for me and I would hate for my hobby to be shut down because I did some freaking crazy shit, okay? So Alex says you got an axe or a Kirkaru for brush. Um, so I use a Gerber. I have a Gerber double. I think it's called a double lockdown machete or some shit like that. Field trip. Let me look it up. So I have replaced my um, oh shit handle with two different options. Okay. So one of my oh shit handles is replaced with a Coast P, I think it's a P18XR flashlight or some shit like that. So that's one of them. My other oh shit handle is replaced with the Gerber double down machete. Now, here's the thing. The machete is when it's, it, it's in its folded state, it's folded up like this and it has a lock on it. The reason I have it in my oh shit handles because when I go to my hunting property, it's normally right where I enter the property is overgrown. My truck can drive through that, no issues. But if I want to walk to my deer stand, I have to walk through brush. So I like to freaking chop that shit down. I normally will bring this, a weed whacker, and they can get me to my deer stand. Um, I don't, I guess if I ever had to bug out, I would use it for that scenario. But I don't like this guy's using it for bushcraft and shit. I don't use it for that. I usually, I use it once I get out of my truck. And I'm walking to my deer stand. That's what I use it for. But this is my go-to. I used to have the very cheap um, Gerber machete, which is like 25 bucks. On their website, it's 35. On Amazon, you can pick this thing up for like 30, for 25 bucks. The reason this has 2.9 stars, because this thing is freaking shitty AF. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man. It is shitty AF. And... When I took this out and I went to use it to walk to my deer stand, it was getting laughed at by cattails. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys are, uh, if you don't live in the South or in Texas or whatever, cattails are not hard to take down, but you don't want to grab them. They, you know, they hurt. And so it's like, this thing was getting laughed at by cattails. I'm like, oh, no, that's not, that's unacceptable. That's not going to work. So yeah, I did swallow the nut and freaking actually spend the money on the Gerber the, the bigger one. Okay, we, we spent that money. We made that happen as well. Thoughts on using a dry bag backpack as an EDC pack. So for a wild camo, I was using Matador's dry pack. And it was okay, but it just was not very comfortable. It wasn't very comfortable. So I have Matador's packable 30 liter. Let me see. 30 liter duffel packable so i like matador's products they make some really good unique products and they have these like packable duffels that you can buy let me see do they have it on their 
it's like really cheap though but it folds down to the size of like your palm this isn't it no th this is it so i have this duffel in the back of my truck this duffel bag folds all the way down to the size of your hand and it folds out to a 30 liter bag this is a fantastic duffel for if you're going on a trip right and you pack one bag you go on that trip and you decide to do some shopping so now you need a second check bag or a second piece of luggage to take back with you from a trip for instance this upcoming week i'm going to virginia for a work trip i'm gonna pack my one bag but while i'm there i might buy some shit, right and i will bring this bag with me inside of my luggage and if i need to i could bring this back as a carry-on this should it's just so uncomfortable it's just very uncomfortable technically this is a wet dry bag you can put wet shit in there dry bag and whatever they have all sorts of versions of these um i won't do it again because it's just not very comfortable like it's you can't really tell but like look at this guy's neck you see how this thing this thing digs in your neck like a mofo so it's a great concept it's just a hard execution it is a super difficult execution mikey daily carry thanks for kicking the goddamn door in we appreciate that man he says we won't tell and it's so crazy redskin faithful because youtube monitors their site 24 hours a day so what does that mean here it's you know it's after midnight in the central time so the people that may be monitoring live streams to see if you're handling a weapon it might be some 19 year old in india that works for youtube and if he looks in my live stream and i'm handling a boomstick he may not know what handling means to us americans so for me to handle a boomstick would be to take it out of its holster to maybe show you that it's unloaded or show you that it's loaded show you how to clean it or whatever that that's what handling a boomstick means to me but if the 19 year old in india is looking at my live stream and i pick up the boomstick as soon as i pick it up in his holster he may say oh he handled a boomstick shut down that live stream so it's just, it's just too much it's too much subjectivity when it comes to boomstick content so i usually just avoid it altogether x we would love to get to know you better what do you do for a full-time gig also what are some of your hobbies of yours Tristan appreciate that so my um one thing I will say is that um for channel members I do like behind the scenes I do live streams for channel members and I am putting together a Marine X lore video but to sum up what I do for a full-time job when I was in the Marines I was what, what was called a contracting officer and there was about 180 of us in the Marine Corps out of 190,000 Marines our job was to fly or go with marines or soldiers sailors airmen and i guess nowadays guardians and to buy stuff so in afghanistan i purchased i would buy construction projects for the construction of a gymnasium so that marines could work out i would buy goats so that marines can practice sunken chest wounds so they would you know they would shoot the goat and then we would practice sunken chest wounds i would buy wells so if we were going to have some some marines on a fob or a forward operating base that may be several clicks away from our main uh, base like Camp Leatherneck. And it may be inaccessible by vehicle because of roadside bombs, because of different uh, st different streets or different blocks have different warlords. So sometimes you can't just drive a Humvee because every single block you have to bribe the warlord. Well, sometimes we get tired of doing that. So we don't want to we don't want to truck in water for the Marines. That may be at a fob so somebody like me would fly in they would bring me in via helo and i would write a contract for the construction of a well that needed to go 200 meters deep so that we can tap into the to water so marines would have something to drink so my job was to write contracts i took that experience when i got out the marines and i do that currently now but now i audit contracts so any contract with defense contractors like boeing lockheed martin raytheon's jacobs etc I check their work. Are you following the contract? I used to write these. I know you're doing something right. You're doing something wrong. Easiest way to explain it is Boeing won the award to build the new Air Force One. It's a 10 year contract. Most of the contract is top secret because it's Air Force One. But 
while Boeing's building Air Force One, we don't micromanage every single component of what they're doing. We let them make purchases on their own. So if Boeing needs to wrap or skin a wing, they can just go make the purchase and bill us later. They need to buy some wheels or some windows or some whatever. They bill us later. I come in and see, well, the purchase that you made, were they necessary? Did you follow the contract? Stuff like that. So that's, you know, lack of a better term, I'm an auditor, but we don't call ourselves that because it's a little bit more detailed than that. Let's see. Darth says, do you EDC cologne? What cologne do you rock? Um, I EDC the Le Lobo, another 13 in a travel bottle. So here's my thing. So Mrs. X bought me a, um, I, I'm a big fan of like different uh, clocks and watches that have quartz mechanism, automatic me me uh, mechanisms and stuff like that. So I have a, um, I got some obnoxiously priced shit, but one of my favorite items that I have is the uh, the Louis Vuitton trunk clock. And this thing is, well, it's right here. Let me grab it. So sometimes I make ridiculous purchases. It's normally not with everyday carry. It normally has to do with my man cave and shit like that. But I have this Louis Vuitton uh, trunk clock. Now, this is a $5,700 clock. Hey, bro, come on okay. now, dog. It is. Come on, man. But when I made this purchase, um, when I made this initial purchase, it came with like, I don't know, 10 years worth of uh, redeemable cologne or whatever. So I wear a lot of Louis Vuitton cologne because it's included. But I like this thing because it spins around and it has a quartz mechanism. It's fun to look at. And I usually would just leave it on my man cave desk. It has all the world, you know, all the different. Uh, I think I need to reset it. I haven't touched it in a while but has you know it's a fantastic looking piece but it's this is a looker this this serves no other purpose than to stare at and just to enjoy it but to answer your question because of this purchase they always are sending me cologne so i just wear louis vuitton cologne i don't know which one i don't know the brand okay but because of the price of the purchase they just send me shit all the time so that's what i wear Uh, out of context, did you play BF3 back in the day? What's BF3? BF3 back in the day. What does BF3 stand for? Yeah, I don't even know what that stands for. So let me know real quick. Oh, it, I just picked up. Oh, you told me that real quick. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Let me put. So if you put a Q code in front of your question or your comment, it will gain my attention. Let me see if I miss anybody. Am I having a birthday party? I wish we were going to hold. Oh, I missed yours. Ronald Young. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a goddamn member. God, hey. Glad I made it to the party coming in from Cleveland. You said this quite a while ago, but I appreciate you kicking the door in. Snag the Benchmade 940 Osborne on sale. I like it so far. So I had the 945, I think it is. I think it's the 945 or some shit like that. And um, I had the 940 for quite a while. And I just, it just was a little bit too thin in my hands. And it sounds so weird, but the 940 felt way better in my hands. But the issue is, is as much as I like the 940, I one day during, I also, we, we also run a, a podcast called the Mantuary Podcast. We're about to start, oh, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 3. No, I didn't. So back in the day, all I used to play was Halo 3, like a ton, a ton. And then um, I played a whole lot of Call of Duty War at War in Afghanistan when I wasn't off base. And nowadays I play Call of Duty MW3 like once every three weeks or so or some shit what? like that. I don't even know why I bought it. Bro, what are you talking about, man? And I play Elden Ring. Um, I still haven't beat it, even though I've had the game for two years. But I got five kids, man. I don't I just I don't play a lot of games. Back in the day, I never played Battlefield. I had to make a decision, and my decision was Call of Duty and Halo. So those were the first person shooters that I played. So yeah, but the um 
Yeah, it's an interesting thing. I need to take this in. I haven't, I think it may need a new battery. I haven't used this thing in quite a while. He says, uh, okay, baller. Nah, I ain't, listen, that was just one of those purchases that was made, to, you know, just to be able to, to say, he says, happy birthday, X. Appreciate that, man. It is officially my birthday. So yeah, we appreciate that 100%, man. <laughs> appreciate that well wish but yeah so i um i don't know so for me like making a big edc purchase of something like this like cpm you know I, oftentimes i i may show one of his two thousand dollar knives and we might shoot the shit a little bit and say oh that costs a lot of money and shit like that but i don't it it for me it doesn't have a lot of value to to have that type of stuff so the biggest purchase that i ever made that i can remember for an EDC knife, I think it was. I think it was the Boker M4. Um, field trip, let's look this shit up real quick. I don't even know, was it the Boker? Let's go price, high to low. No, I'm not seeing it. Let's go here. Uh, Dwayne, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being a goddamn member. I appreciate the well wishes as well, man. So this one here, two hundred and twenty nine dollars i don't remember let's sort these real quick so the subvert how oh, they must not have it anymore let me log in and look at some of these prices real quick they were having a lot of sales on pocket knives recently they were having a lot of sales on pocket knives recently appreciate the well wishes man we appreciate that i see all y'all in the chat right here Let me see if something's on sale. Then I'll show you the, I think the biggest purchase had to be, oh, the sales are over. That sucks. But I mean, look at this base pricing is so phenomenal. So freaking phenomenal. So I know the Boker M4 Sherman. All right. So I purchased the Boker M4 Sherman. And when I bought it, it was $400. I bought it on base. I bought this because the reason I bought this is that the M4 Sherman is made of pieces of the Sherman tank that we used in World War II. Okay. So we have pieces of the Sherman tank that are still in Europe. And then obviously we have pieces of the Sherman tank that are here in the States. They make this knife in Germany, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm like a historical buff when it comes to war type stuff. One of my favorite series is the Pacific and I like movies like We Were Soldiers. I like Band of Brothers. I like Fury. I like I like shit like that. I also like wearing stuff that makes historical significance to me. I'm wearing a Field Watch, which is the A12 Dirty Dozen, which is there was 12 companies that committed themselves to make a certain standard of watch for the soldiers in World War II. That's why they're called the A12. That's why I like wearing A12 Dirty Dozen type watches. I also have a um, Ben Roos field watch which was issued to soldiers in vietnam and so it's a reissue so it's the exact same watch that was issued to soldiers in vietnam when we we're finding the Viet Cong. um so that type of stuff has a historical significance to me so i bought this for 400 dollars on base and because it's made of pieces of the sherman tank and so it just meant a lot to me to make that purchase and i keep it in a case i rarely handle it i i think i've maybe cut with it twice uh, but i really like it a lot um and the other purchase that i made which was a big boy i bought the bench made gold class tengu tool and um when i bought this i bought it on base matter of fact this is the listing i bought this is the literal site that i bought it on and this is how much i paid for it right now this thing is going for i sold this i think i sold it for five or six hundred dollars but th these are like the biggest purchases that i made i like the way this thing looked so i made the purchase um i think nowadays these things are going for uh, uh, astronomical prices on ebay and shit like that so it says the war wax cables backpack you recommended for edc trying to develop my edc more towards leather and patina style 
noir wax ca cables backpack oh are you saying what was is that what you're saying so but the 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 wax canvas that i recommend right now uh is the water fell the nutsack or the roaring fire are the ones that i like so the the leatherman arc the leatherman arc let me tell you something i have incredible fomo well i had incredible fomo for the leatherman arc and i felt like i was missing out i saw ron quack had one zach and the wild had one taylor martin had one everyday minimalist had one and i'm like damn do i need to spend this 229 dollars you know and do i need to spend that money or the items i have already capable so the way that i got rid of that fomo is i just upgraded my leatherman free p4 but my thoughts on the leatherman arc anti-view is two things if you carry a multi-tool every single day i mean you're gonna dedicate yourself to carry a multi-tool every single day and when i say carry it i don't mean like in a bag I mean, on your person, whether in the sheath or via the pocket clip in your pocket, the Leatherman Arc is worth it. But if you're buying it because you like the way it looks, because every now and again, you may use the tools, get a Leatherman Curl, a Leatherman Wave Plus, get a, you know, a Gerber suspension, a, a SOG Power Pint. But that type of price point is for someone that's using their multi-tool multi every single day. Also, if you don't want to carry a pocket knife and you want to be able to use that magna cut blade i was just watching max level edc's four month review on the leatherman arc he said that the coating on the magna cut makes it so that tape or sticky residue from tape damn near never sticks to that blade so if you just want to carry the leatherman arc as the one tool in your pocket and not carry a knife then that price makes sense but if you carry a knife every day if you're not going to actually carry that on your person that price doesn't make sense now leatherman has discontinued the free p4 it's not available on their website you can still buy it on amazon but i would recommend if you just want something in the free series get the free p4 or the free p2 because the arc is a is a pricey boy if you just have to have that technology of of opening it one-handed I, I wouldn't get the arc that's my thoughts on that I tried that with the Boker AK. I used a an old AK wood hand guard, make scales, but I didn't like anything special. Okay. Question in the Marines that I have to do seer training. No, I did not. So seer training, I think they sent people to Rhode Island or some state. I don't know. They would, would put you out there with a, a, a knife and a rabbit or, you know, whatever. So I wrote contracts for seer training. I didn't have to do seer training. Because when, if I had to go somewhere with recon marines or operators, the guys that grew beards and shit, I was going, I was normally going to places before they arrived. And I was not going to places where they were operating. So operators operate, you know, they're doing Osama bin Laden type to, uh, missions. I'm not going in with them for that. But I do go to when they're about to preparing for training or for the base or for where they're going to be residing at. So the soldiers or the the navy seals that took out osama were in pakistan they, they weren't in pakistan i don't know where they were at but they had to go into pakistan but wherever they were residing which is normally on a navy ship then i'm the person writing contracts for their comfort or for their training materials so i'll go to jamaica before the operators get there and i make purchases for a training they're about to do i go to morocco and i make con i write contracts for training that they're about to do i will go to afghanistan and i will write stuff that we needed while we were out there so i would write contracts for stuff like marines soldiers sailing or uh, uh, soldiers or sailors are not expected to clear russian mines from when russia invaded afghanistan in the 1970s those mines still exist right well when we um when we were in afghanistan i would write contracts for local afghans to actually go out and clear those russian mines now it sucked because some of them would actually get you know blown up which kind of sucked but we were not going to go out there and clear that type of stuff so we would um we would oftentimes write those contracts for instance this is um 
this here is I was on a reconnaissance to check on my contract. So I wrote a contract to have a certain division. This is in Afghanistan. If you see the vehicle way off in a distance, he has a, a sweeper in front of him. And he's it, basically the way this was built is that in theory, the IEDs would be detected by the sweeper before he would be at least 200 meters in front of us. But we would go out and check the work of the, the person that I was per that we paid to sweep for these Russian mines. I have to actually go out there and see if he dug the hose. So, but we weren't doing it. And funny story is about three minutes later, we started taking fire from those mountains and we had to evac pretty quick. Well, after they started putting rounds down range from that 50 cal on top of that MRAP, we started evac pretty quick. But so that's the type of stuff that I would do. So I didn't have to do SEER training because I wasn't operating, if that makes sense. Any boomsticks on your wish list? I want a 300 blackout build. And funny enough, I don't, I do not own an AR-15 build. I, I have an AR-10, I have a 22 platform and an AR. I have a 300 blackout build. I would like a 454 build. I would like a six millimeter from like the 1970s. Um, I guess I got a few, I got, I guess I got a few of them on my wish list, right? I have the surge for work in the Leatherman Arc for daily away from work customized. I paid about 325. Listen, max level, he he like put different scales or something on his. His shit looks fucking fire. I will tell you that. I love the way that looks. Have you heard of the Roxon? The S802 looks great. And super, here's the thing. The GOAT, the Roxon, or however you pronounce it, I love the fact that they are allowing for modularity. They're letting you pick the tools that you want to put in your multi-tool and go from there. So I'm a big fan of, let's see, HVAC budget multi-tool. There's a YouTuber I follow and he's an HVAC guy. And he literally mostly um, does content on multi-tools. He literally is always in uh different compressors or condensers or um for hvacs he's doing work on that type of stuff so he has a multi-tool on him every day i follow his channel religiously on my main channel he's always talking about multi-tools and i get he has fantastic content for multi-tools and he will give you advice on alternatives to leatherman and he talked about that uh, the roxon or whatever and he's the one that convinced me that it's a viable option if you don't want to spend the money on a Leatherman. So if you never heard of his channel, I'll link him in the, uh, the chat as well. He's just, uh, he pumps out great content when it comes to multi-tools and you should check him out. Uh, the Lego Arms Alien. What is that for? The Alien Creator? It's supposed to be more modular on release. Everything's supposed to be customizable. That's what I saw on his channel. I, I think I saw Max Level talking about it as well. We'll see. I mean, I don't I don't have any reason to think that they wouldn't be, especially for, yo, oh man, get right on my face. But yeah, I don't have any reason to see why they wouldn't be more modular. I'm a big fan of my free P4 and it gets the job done. But here's the thing, I don't carry a multi-tool every day on my person. There's always a multi-tool around me, whether it's in a pouch, it's in my truck. So like in my truck armrest as a Leatherman Skeletal. If I don't have a, a multi-tool on my person because I'm wearing joggers or something like that, there's a Leatherman Juice in a pouch. And if I'm wearing my Vertex trousers or my Columbia trousers or 511, there's a multi-tool on my person. So I have it for different reasons in different scenarios. Oh, uh, the alien creator is a boomstick. Okay, I got you. Okay. I got you. That makes sense. Yeah, man. It's just an interesting thing. So Blade Atlanta. Blade Show Atlanta. Let's look that up because I'm going to be there. And if you guys didn't go to Blade, Texas, then Blade Atlanta 
is kind of the place where you want to go. If you want to be able to Blade Atlanta, I'm going to go. I want to try to organize a um, a meetup, not just with me, maybe other creators. Because, I mean, who fucking cares about just me, right? Hey, bro, come on now. Like, who dog. cares? Come on, man. But Blade Atlanta, I'm going to be out here June 7th through the 24th. The Cobb Galleria. I got a couple of buddies I'm going to stay with. Makes life a lot easier. So this is going to be, this is the biggest Blade show in the world. Blade Texas is the second. Blade West is a vibe. I haven't been out there, but I've seen videos of it. So definitely think about checking this out. This are my thoughts about Blade show overall. And I'm hopeful that when it comes to survival, prep, EDC, everyday carry, knives, and stuff like that, I hope that there's an expansion in 2024 for people that look like me. People of color that are that become more creators get further into this space i have a lot of buddies who are just completely unfamiliar with everyday carry type of items if i hand them a pocket knife i'm very i'm you know a lot of a lot of my buddies that look like me if i hand them a pocket knife i'm very confident that they're going to slice a freaking phalange i'm just what no i'm, I'm confident of it bro what are you talking about man so i'm hoping that we're able to expand that this year and you know, we got people like uh, George Define, of course, the Canadian prepper, his crazy ass. He does this type of stuff as well. But I would love to see that expanded out and just kind of see more folks out there. Because one thing I notice every time I go to a blade show, shot show, any type of expo is that I am easily spotted because I am that guy with dreadlocks and I'm six foot two, 230 pounds. OK. It's a pricey boy. Uh, let's see. Widow says, do I have any tips on a starter uh, field watch? Something that's under $150. I want to get away from my smartwatch. But um, I don't want to get another G-Shock. So what I would say is VAR. I'm, I'm a big fan of VAR. Full disclosure, VAR sponsors videos. Um, so I'm a little, I have a bias for VAR. But there's other watches that are great as well. I'm a big fan of watch brands, micro brands that assemble their watches in the United States. That doesn't mean they're not 100% in the United States, um, but I like stuff that that are assembled in the United States. So VAR is doing it, Persitis, I think that's how they pronounce the name of their company. They're doing it as well. But you can get something like from the S3 line or the S5 line. And if I don't have the discount code here widow but if you go to watch any of my videos where i talk about var um my discount code will get these below 150 dollars so i'm gonna be i'm gonna have a couple of uh var is gonna be sponsored some videos uh coming up soon and i think that a great start it, it depends on how big your wrist is i prefer 36 millimeter 38 millimeter watches so the, the watch that I'm wearing right now is a 36 millimeter because I don't have really fat wrist. If you have a bigger wrist, then you might want to get a 40 millimeter watch. Uh, these are $179, $179. My discount will probably get it below 150, but this is a real field watch, meaning it's going to have loom. Um, it's going to be something that you can see at night. So let me just show you the difference with like something like this. So this has loom, meaning that once it's completely dark, you're going to have a little bit of loom on the actual hour in the minute hand and on some of the indices so that you can see what time it is, even when it's pitch dark. So that's kind of important. So this is um, this is like a nice starter field watch. But if you want something the um, that has like a tremendous amount of loom, the watch that I'm wearing right now is called the A12 Dirty Dozen. And this has great loom on it. This is a $900 watch. You see the difference in loom. This entire watch face is loomed. So you can tell the reason this watch costs so much because it has a Swiss automatic movement inside of it. Uh, but it's a fantastic watch as well. But I think that the company is called, let me look them up. I think they're called Persadis. Um, Let me see. Field trip. All right, so... I was in talks with them to do a review on one of their watches. Um, and we just, we haven't fully worked that out yet, but I don't know if they have any watches that are below 150 bucks. And then there's always the Timex, the Field Scout, I think is what it's called. Um, let me sort these from price low to high. 
So they have the jungle field. I don't know anything about these. Let me see what the loom looks like. Oh, they don't have any pictures of the loom. Maybe it doesn't have loom. Interesting. Here's the thing. Whatever field watch you decide to go with, whether it is assembled in the USA, you can get a Hamilton. Hamiltons are no longer made in the USA and they're not $150. Um, I would just say at a minimum, ensure that it has an easy, easy to read case, easy to read numbers. I like numbers on my field watch. It has decent loom and it has either a quartz or an automatic movement. Um, so my, my number, my go-to recommendation is almost always an S5 Tactical by VAR. Um, this is this is the watch right here. One of my favorite watches to wear. This uses solar power to regain its energy. It has a quartz movement, but with solar power, this has a reserve of six months. So this thing will basically just keep going and going and going. So I'm a big fan of this watch as well. But if you don't want to spend this type of bucks, I think Timex has a scout. I see a lot of people mention that in my... Um, in some of my comments on my videos but i don't know what the loom looks like on the scout field trip let's look that shit up does it even have loom or does it have an actual light so loom is the easiest way to describe it is loom is like paint that they put on different indices or numbers on the watch so that you can see um so you can see it at night so for the scout i think that they actually just put a light inside of this yeah it has a light up watch dial so it's technically a field watch but it doesn't have loom on it that's probably why it's only 59 bucks but it's a good starter watch it's a good watch to see if you're going to like wearing an analog watch versus a smart watch so it's really going to be something that you might want to check out as well creators in the world for a reason uh mc shabazz uh, uh, listen um shabazz is fantastic um i can't remember the guy was I watch all the time about survival bags 400 glad to see you live stream i hope you're doing well have a great night as well hey appreciate you kicking the goddamn door in man a lot of places you could have went but you came here good head on your shoulders <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled. I'll probably do a vertical live stream tomorrow. I'm going to wrap it up now. See if I can get lucky and go 20 toes with Mrs. X. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. I got to go wake her up, though. Come on, man. Time for me to bounce myself up out of here, man. Ah! Go ahead and get up out of here and go chill out and all that good stuff. Hopefully, y'all have a good night, guys, and we will speak soon.